Hi there, welcome to the new lecture. This is going to be more explanation on Azure File Sync services, how it's gonna work. And we will deep drive how this is gonna work and later point we will jump into the demo. So let's begin uh, to understand the tradition way. So that being said, let's say if I have a file server here, think that you know this is your file server and maybe this is in your headquarters and you might have you know some of the workstations where these files can be accessed uh, from this file server right so you would be able to access similarly if you have your uh, branch offices example in this case uh, let's say in New York or maybe Los Angeles or maybe in India we might be you know configure currently with the help of our branch cache uh, with the branch cache help maybe from here the files will you know move here or to other branch offices uh, similarly here also the if one files are you know change that gets you know replicated some with the technology called a replication method so the replication might be you know taking care uh, with some other uh, we call it as the either DNF, uh, DFS namespaces or maybe you would you know use a branch cache so and then the files are syncing up this is the current infrastructure that you have with your on premises now uh, how does Azure file sync comes into the picture so when we talk about the Azure file sync uh, within this uh, within this uh, same uh, structure you would actually have in between something called Azure and uh, this Azure or the cloud provider uh, will come into the picture so what would happen is uh, technically the files will be replicated two way to Azure cloud maybe in this case maybe a storage uh, service or maybe file sync services so there could be some agent that would actually we would install on the on premises file server space and that gets automatically synced to cloud so the files as you know put it on your file servers uh, that's actually goes to the azure cloud so that's how it's gonna work so i'm just uh, giving you an, a rough idea how uh, this actually works as a technology right so these branch offices let's say it, it doesn't need to you know, go to the file server also if really needed it can actually pull it from directly from your azure cloud or if it is a frequently accessed thing then the files will directly come from your local machine so in a cloud it knows as an intelligent that uh, a files that are frequently asked asked by the, these client machines or the users will keep it on a local server the files are really asked will automatically put it into the cloud as you know cold or you call it as an archive method so that you're saving the time and uh, you might be you know thinking that you know how about the recovery or maybe disaster recovery cases it's simple um, because you just have to spin up one more server and within that server the specific uh, agent we call it as a as your sync agent and if you install that agent you could you know uh, build the entire infrastructure in a no matter actually it takes a couple of minutes time to you know build the entire infrastructure ready in any case if one file server goes down you simply have to spin up one server and install the agent and the files will be readily available that's how it's going to work so this is the advantage wise when we look at the azure file sync so we will deep drive you know uh, the things that uh, how to you know configure all of that stuff so when we talk about the uh, pre-requirements to install or to configure this azure file sync uh, you need to have the azure storage account and within that you would be you know creating something called a file storage and also uh, for installing there is an agent that needs to be installed that's called the azure file sync agent and this needs a kind of you know powershell as a pre-requirement and also it needs the dotnet framework should be available uh, because um, that's a framework that is built uh, to communicate with your storage account all of that stuff so some of the assemblies we call it so the dotnet framework is a other thing which is need a a pre-requirement after that we install this agent and then we are going to configure our azure configuration and that's how it's going to work so we will be performing all of these steps in a minute we can see here there's a folder if i just go to run 
and this is my local domain controller and this is a shape folder so if I just click on OK we do have a lot of files within the shape folder now what we are trying to do is our objective is to get these entire shape folder to be replicated to Azure file sync services and then the client should be able to access that I mean this specific share folder from Azure cloud that's what we are going to try to do so that's the entire demo that we are going to do within the short lecture that being said let's begin if you're thinking about the how and what kind of you no know, file share permissions I should give for my existing uh, file sh file server so that the remains the same thing that what you would do is normally in your normal file shared permissions like you know NTFS permissions and the shared access permissions that all have to be you know, given okay but now when we move to Azure cloud the file shared sync services to move what we have to do is we have to have one storage account so this is my storage account called Parimari in this case and within this uh, storage account I need to create a uh, file share which is matching to my folder for example this is a folder that we are talking about so it's a it hyphen share that's what I'm trying to do so I'll just create here file it hyphen share and then oh, it has to be a lowercase so it hyphen share and uh, well, this is a you no know, uh, Tiring again, you know, when we talk about the tiring, you have an option, you know, whether this can be, you know, hot means very frequently accessed or cool is like, you know, for archiving purpose or transaction optimizer automatically does that uh, latency based. Um, it keeps locally the required files. If a file is not frequently accessed, it will actually put it on Azure Cloud. That's how it's going to do transaction optimize. So we would, you know, choose this. And click on create this is going to create a shape folder uh, within the file services and the next step would be the deploying the Azure file sync service so this is a service from uh, Microsoft uh, cloud so that's a separate service that needs to be deployed so let's go to the uh, Microsoft Azure search here and type as Azure file sync and uh, you would you know uh, get a service called the Azure file sync so I'll just say search Oops. so you see here from the marketplace you have this as your file sync click on that and it's going to load up and uh, if you have already as your file sync is deployed then you would you know get a new window where the uh, current sync service that was you know configured will be available but in my case it did not have so i have to create one so i'll use the existing resource group i'm going to give this as a name as you know uh, like you know storage sync service and uh, this is going to be easiest too so make sure that you know you have proper regions so in my case I have to you know, choose as easiest because my storage account also there and click on networking so if you want you know everything you know move from all network or private endpoints you should you know choose and also the tags and that's it you could you know, create by clicking on a create button so now this will create a Azure file sync service in a few more minutes. After that, we have to add a sync up groups within the Azure file sync. Now the service is deployed. So let's go to that resource called storage sync service. And uh, within this, you need to you know, create this sync up groups. So and uh, post to that we will be you know, creating the register servers from your on premises. So this is where we you need to you know install the agent and that agent will sync up all the uh, file shared uh, sync files to cloud and it will be visible. So before doing registering any of the server, you need to have at least one of the sync groups. So let me click on a sync group and give here. For example, this is for ITFS sync group and now this is where I need to choose the storage account so you could you know click on choose a storage account so in my case I have already created a storage account and the shared folder that we created as a first step as part of this demo so I would you know choose here that file share also and click on create so now what would happen is this sync up group consists of a share folder and within this uh, sync up group, whatever the sync folders are there, 
uh, by using these registered all that locally on premiously available files get synced into the sync group and sync group consists of a shade folder that was mapped to Azure storage account to a shade folder right so that's how it's going to work in the back end so that being said let's wait for a second to you know complete this and yeah it's completed now we will go back to the register service so within this register service you have an option to download the agent so in my case this is my file server too that's why i'm going to in download this uh, file sync agent by going this web, web page and click on download this is offering uh, like you know 64 bit and for windows 2012 r2 2016 2019 or whatever that case is so in our case this is a 2019 so i'll choose this one and click on next that would download the agent and this is a simple agent and install the agent and this is the azure agent uh, that will work for your storage sync and we call it this has the storage sync agent and this is default accept in case if you have a proxy you should be you now configuring your proxy settings to communicate and this is more interesting point let's say these agents always keep on gets uh, introduced the new features right so these things in the past we used to uh, uninstall and reinstall the agent but now what microsoft has taken as a considered as a feedback is they are gonna update as part of the windows update these agents also so that's a good and new thing so let's use that microsoft update option so that it gets automatically updated and now you have an option for automatically update when you want to you know uh, update automatically so that also you should you know choose the options just in case if you want to you know update the agent on a specific day and time the installation takes a minute or so once the agent is installed, you can close the wizard by clicking on a finish button. Now you have an option uh, with the agent update option. So the file sync on this uh, agent is up to date. Click on OK. And uh, as soon as the agent is installed, it will ask you to register this agent with the Azure file sync server. So which is a service which was we hosted in Azure cloud, right? So for that, how would we do is to here the agent should come up so that's the first step what we have done is we downloaded and we installed after installing we have to follow this specific uh, link to get the server to be you know, contacted with your storage sync service so in my case i have uh, azure cloud if this is a public cloud and in case if you have any china cloud or u.s government or german cloud you should be you know, choosing based on your um, cloud environment and I would you know simply click on sign in in case if you're a CSP you should be able to use even CSP specific so I'm just entering my account and click on sign in with the password user ID and it would go and pull that configuration for you and so in my case this is the account and now it's going to pull up my all the available subscriptions and my resource groups and the storage account and click on register so that it's going to register with that so this is a storage sync service what you are seeing here and this is a resource group so you see here this is a storage sync service is the name that we have given so that's why it's coming up here in a couple of minutes you will see it will actually check the smoke test of the network connectivity and also it gets registered automatically all you have to do is just you know close that window and if you just click on refresh here you might see here a server is online now when you go back to your sync groups so this is a sync group and this is the register server that is available as online here so now from the sync groups you can click on a sync group and click on your sync group and this will actually list all the uh, shades that you have created so this is a shade that you have created right so you should be able to add the server that is we just install the agent so click on add and it will show the register server and the path of the server shade that is locally available so if you see here uh, it is actually under it shades right so if i just go to c drive and my share folder it share so this is the folder that is uh, i have shared locally so this is a name so i'll simply go and here i'll give as the local 
path uh, of the server and you see here uh, we are going to work on the cloud tiering all of that in the upcoming lectures but for now uh, we are not going to do uh, these things in this uh, demo but that's for other sections where we are going to manage more about the Azure file sync and configuring managing Windows files or shares or different you know sections but you know click on create this would uh, do the configuration and it will start syncing in the back end all the files that are available on that local path uh, to upload to your Azure storage account. It just completed the uh, process of service endpoint creation however it's still in the pending state of updating meaning in a couple of minutes once this is in a green state you will have all the files on your storage account so we'll wait for a second now the status showing as a green uh, that means it has stopped the replication meaning all the files has been from on-premises to cloud it's mode so let's go back to the storage account so this is a storage account within the storage account we created a shape folder so click on file shares and we created a shape folder called it share and within this all the files should come in a minute or so yeah you see so all the files has been automatically synced up so this is how azure file sync will work for you so coming back to the security in just in case if you have any concerns on the security point of view yeah so the ntfs and other permissions would be you not know, taken care from internally on a windows active directory point of view you could also grant from arm um, access at this level or from the shape folder level so both the places you should have a control to you know grant it i hope this lecture is useful for you thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next lectures